This lecture is about absorption of proteins. That how the proteins absorption takes place in the human body. So the process of absorption in the human body takes place in the small intestine. So the small intestine lining is made up of as the small intestine has the lumen and is surround and the walls are made up of epithelial cells. So these epithelial cells or the lining or the wall of the small intestine have circular inner foldings. So these circular inner folding are known as villi or they have, these have very numerous inside circular foldings also known as micro villi. So these, the function of these villi, micro villi is that they increases the surface area for the process of absorption. In these villi, there are numerous blood capillary network that are involved in the absorption that the food particles, the smallest, most simpler food particles will be absorbed, will cross these intestinal lining and will be entered into the blood capillaries. And then from there, they are taken to the blood circulation to be provided to the specific targets and to specific organs. So the absorption of proteins as the proteins are taken up by the human body in the form of food. So there are different food sources through which proteins uh, are taken up by the human body, then they pass through the digestive system where the complete digestion of protein takes place. So the final product for the protein digestion are the amino acids. So proteins, the complex structures are completely digested into the final product are the amino acids as amino acids are the building blocks of the proteins as the amino acids linked together through the peptide bond and through different conformational changes structural conformation changes they form the structure of the protein so they are again in the human body they are completely digested into the amino acids that are, will be present in the small intestine so some proteins are also not completely digested into amino acids but they will be in the form of peptides like they will be the tripeptides or dipeptides they will also they can also be absorbed through the intestinal lining to the through the uh, intestinal cells so mostly they are amino acids and some of them can also be the in the form of peptides as in case of carbohydrates monosaccharides the final product was monosaccharides and only monosaccharides can cross the intestinal lining and absorption can take place but in case of proteins uh, the dipeptides and tripeptides can also cross the intestinal lining so which what uh, are the transporters or proteins that are involved in the transport of these um, amino acids amino acids are transported as these amino acids are present in the intestinal lumen this is the intestinal cell that is the epithelium, also known as enterocyte, and here is the blood capillary. So the amino acids will first cross this, uh, it will enter into the intestinal cells, and from there they will cross this lining and will enter into the blood capillary. So amino acids are transported to the amino acid transporters into the enterocytes, and from there they are again from the inside of the cell amino acid transporters, they will transport it inside the blood capillaries. As in the case of the protein digestion, there can be some peptides as dipeptidases or tripeptidases. So they will enter into the cell through a special transporter known as dipeptide and tripeptide transporter. So this transporter, they will enter inside the cell. Then inside the cell, there in case of the proteins, the peptidases enzymes are present in the intestinal cells. So these peptidases that will break these peptide bonds present inside these amino acids as these are, this is dipeptide, these both are linked by the peptide bond. So the enzyme that is peptidase that will break this bond and in the, in this tripeptidases, these are linked by the peptide bond. So they will break the bond and will release and will set these amino acids free. So when these, and so that's why the um, absorption of these peptidases also takes place by these intestinal cells because their specific enzymes are available in these cells to convert them or into this or break them into simple amino acids. Then these simple amino acids, they will be transported to the blood capillaries. As um, 
amino acids are also present in the small intestine and the dipeptides and tripeptides are also present. So in the case of the protein digestion, 20% uh, amino acid is formed and almost 80% are in the form of dipeptides and tripeptides. So amino acids will be directly converted, uh, sorry, it will be directly absorbed into these intestinal cells and will be absorbed into the blood circulation. While in case of dipeptides and tripeptides, they, there are specific enzymes present in the intestinal cells. So they will be also be absorbed into these cells, will be taken up by the intestinal cells. And then in the intestinal cells, as the specific enzymes, peptidases are present, that will convert them into amino acids and then will be taken up by the blood. But in very few cases, uh, it's approximately 10% is also absorbed in the form of dipeptides and tripeptides. So 90% amino acids will be taken up to the blood and approximately 10% will also be absorbed in the form of dipeptides and tripeptides. While in case of carbohydrates, um, no disaccharides or trisaccharides were absorbed, only monosaccharides were absorbed into the blood circulation. But in case of proteins, uh, 90, uh, approximately 90% will absorption takes place in the form of amino acids, but dipeptides and tripeptides absorption also takes place. So um, the transport of amino acids, just like glucose, as we studied in the glucose, the glucose were transported through the intestinal lining or through the intestinal cell by a special transport mechanism known as co-sodium transport mechanism or also known as symport. So this process is known as symport or this protein is known as symport because it allows the passage of two substances to pass through it as these are, this amino acid will be dependent on the sodium to pass through this membrane. So amino acids are also transported in the presence of the sodium ion. So this carrier protein will allow the passage of amino acid in the presence of sodium ion. So in this protein, at one side, the amino acid will attach and to the other side, sodium will attach and will allow the, and will transport both of them into the intestinal cell. So when the inter, into the enterocyte amino acid enters, amino acid will be taken up, will enter into the blood circulation while the sodium will be exchanged with the potassium as the two molecules, uh, three molecules of sodium will go out and two molecules of potassium will come inside. So this process, the exchange of sodium with potassium, it requires the presence of the ATP. So ATP will be converted into ADP. So this sodium potassium pump, sodium potassium ATP, is, it is ATP dependent. So you can see that this is an energy requiring process. So this amino acid is also transported just like the glucose were transported in case of absorption of carbohydrates. So amino acid and sodium, uh, like sodium co-transport, co-transporter or also known as the symport, that amino acid will be transported along with the presence of the sodium ion inside the intestinal cell. And then from the intestinal cell into the blood, they are transported through simple passive facilitated diffusion.